Are you looking to learn how to do a level 5 smooth finish and you want to know what is a level 5? Well, I'm going to show you how we're going to turn this bumpy textured wall into a totally smooth level 5 finish. And I'll do that right after this. Hey, welcome back to my channel and we're going to get right into this level 5 stuff. Now, first of all, what do we mean by level 5? Well, basically it's a smooth finish, but there's actually kind of two levels of smooth. Level 4 would be where it's smooth, but it's not perfect. Basically, level 5 is as smooth as you can get it where pretty much no defects of any kind shows, and that means humps and that means nicks, dings, scratches. It's basically as smooth as you can get it. So let's go over the definition real quickly. This is from the USG.com website, and USG is a major manufacturer of drywall supplies. First of all, you see for level four, we'll skip down to what it's basically for is under light textures. So in other words, this is not really meant to be left just smooth something will go over it like wallpaper or a light texture now i'll leave a link to this website in the description down below the video if you want to read the rest of it but now let's move on to level five level five is the highest quality finish and it's meant to provide a uniform surface and minimize the possibility of joint photographing now let's move down here to this part right here where it shows that in order to obtain a level 5 finish, you need a thin skim coat of joint compound and you basically wipe it off fairly tightly. So it's a very thin skim coat. And then you sand it down and you take it a few more steps, which is what I'm going to teach you here. So to get level 5, what you do is you finish your drywall just as good as you can. If you're doing repairs or you're doing new construction, you just get it as far as you can. You've got it sanded, smoothed out, touched up. You think it's pretty much ready for texture, for example. And then to take it to level five, that would be like level four. To take it to level five, you have to skim coat it. There's no two ways around it. If you don't, what happens is wherever you've got mud and it's sanded, it will come out just glossy, slick, smooth no texture to it at all but the paper of drywall has a texture to it it's kind of a woven texture and you'll see the difference between the two if you just paint it if you put a really good stipple on it like a three quarter inch roller and several two to three coats of paint primer and all that you can sometimes make it look pretty close to a level five but to get a true level five requires coating every square inch of the drywall with drywall mud and it's a really thin layer because you've already got it nice and smooth you can do it several ways one way if you're doing big jobs like hospitals and that what they will do is they'll use an airless paint sprayer because now you can spray it on everywhere get it on fairly quickly there's no knife marks but it takes about a five thousand dollar airless to do that so not many people do that the other way is simply a pan and a knife you put it on sand it down touch it up and get it that way on a smaller area or you could do it on a bigger you can roll it on with a paint roller and i've showed these two methods in other videos so i'll put the thumbnails up here if you want to go check out how to do it so you'd basically roll it on with a paint roller and then smooth it out with something like this craft uh, skimming blade i'll put a link to all this stuff in the description down below if you want to check it out and we do make a small commission on anything if you click on it and purchase it and we thank you for your support but it's more than all that once we've skimmed it all out and we have sanded it it's still not done and i'll show you why here in a little bit there's one last step kind of two the other way you can do it is with this skimming blade which i'm going to show you today because i've already showed you how to do it with a knife and a paint roller so now we're going to show you the advantage of using this okay since we're using this for skim coating to do this skim coating what you would need to coat something this rough is a sand pole a way of sanding it and the blade and then your pan and knives to put it on so your basic mudding tools and then of course we got this blade 
Okay, our objective here is to get a level five finish, so it's probably gonna take two coats. Now the first step is because of all this bumpiness on here, you wanna scrape it. There's always gonna be some little peaks that'll make your knife jump and chatter and you'll get the washboard look on here and it'll just mess up what you're trying to do. So just get you a blade and scrape the whole thing first and then we're gonna sand it. Okay, now the next step is you wanna sand it. You could prob probably get by without sanding it after you scrape it, but I found that doing these two together gives me an even better chance of knocking down those last little peaks that, that are sticking out. So I like to use an 80 grit on a sand pole. If you're a novice, there's a sander called a radius sander. So I can't show it to you today, but here's a picture of it. And this thing works great because this one's a little harder to use for amateurs because of the fact that it sometimes will want to flip like that. The radius doesn't want to, so check that out in the description down below. Just go over it once real quick, knock down the final peaks, and then we're ready to move on. Okay, now normally on something like this, you're not gonna have that much dust, so you probably don't need to dust it. You can if you want to though. Okay, the next step would be to put a solid coat of mud on this and float it all out. Now I do like to, when I'm skim coating, I try and put the mud on fairly evenly to start so I I usually don't like to leave too much of this rough stuff, so if you see me go over it a couple times, I'm evening the mud out. See right there, I had a little light spot, so if you can see that on camera, it's a little light, so what I did is I still got mud on here, I just come down. When I get close to that, I can lay a little more mud on it and it goes away. Now, it doesn't have to be super smooth at this point. So the next step would be to just start smoothing it and whatever works for you, you can run it sideways, top to bottom. I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do. I left the mesh tape in there, oh well. Now. You'll notice on my, my uh, system here, this is a brand new setup. This is my brand new studio. This is video number two. One of the things I've done is made this accent light up here. I can turn this on and off as I need to. And if I really want to make everything stand out, I turn off these other lights and you can see the defects even more. You can probably see the bubbles over here. This is the first time I've used this, so I hope you can see these. They stand out much better when you light across the surface like this. All right, now for a level five or a smooth finish, this is about all I would take it because I know that heavy a texture to get it level five. It's gonna take two coats anyway. Okay, a little trick here, little drywaller's trick. When you're coating wide stuff like this and you got these overlap marks, you wanna leave this lap mark that looks kind of like this versus I'm gonna come over here to the edge and ruin this. If you leave an edge where you're leaving a gouge type edge, that's much harder to sand off. The one where this edge is actually 
going up on top of that one. I call it a lap mark. When it does that, all you got to sand off is that little peak right there. It sands off easy. If you do it this way, you pretty much can't sand it off. So the way you leave lap marks correctly is when you want the lap mark over there, you put a slight more amount of pressure on the other side. And then like when I did this one, I put the more pressure on the bottom that pushed the lap mark to the middle. I don't have any of those gouge type lap marks and it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. We're going to let this dry overnight, come back, sand it, do another coat. Okay, I've let this dry overnight. It's dried thoroughly. So the first step for today is just to sand it. Now I would recommend you wear a mask. If I wear a mask, it's hard to talk, but I'd recommend you wear one for safety. If you start seeing texture coming through, you may be going too far because you're going to have to recover that. So you're trying to just smooth it out so we can do the next coat. Now I'm sanding with 80 grit, so it's pretty aggressive. And if you can see right here, there's a lot of sanding scratches and that's okay at this step, but I've basically leveled it out. So now if you see, it's still fairly rough. There's some of the texture showing through right here, the bumpiness and then there's all these sand scratch marks that I'm leaving and that's okay but we're trying to take off these lap marks like here. Now when you sand afterwards there's always going to be this little layer of dust on here so I recommend that you vacuum that off. If you want you can go over it with a damp rag or a damp mop but be very gentle because it doesn't take anything to damage it with a wet rag. So just go over it lightly. So at this point, we're basically ready to do the same thing again. We're gonna put another coat on. I'm gonna put it on pretty thin because I don't see much texture left to cover, but you don't want it real thin at this point unless it came out really, really good. But I am I know that there's still a few deeper things. So I'm gonna put a medium thin coat on. All right, that's coated, so now it's time to let that dry. We're gonna put a fan on it, come back, sand it with some fine grit. We'll probably go to 220, and this thing should be ready for texture, almost ready for level five. I'm gonna do a separate video continuation of this to show you how to do a level five. Okay, this dried, so on camera right now, it probably looks really good, and it's, it's in pretty dang good shape. This is smooth from top to bottom, except there's one area. Can you see it? It runs right down the middle where we overlapped it. And that's why I created this 
upper lighting here so I can show it to you better. This should make it stand out a little bit better and I'll show you a picture of it here. And all that is, is it's the area where the two overlapped. So the one final step for a skim coating like this would be to sand it and then do minor touch up. It doesn't have to be perfect, depends on what kind of texture you're putting. The heavier the texture, the less work you gotta do, but we definitely wanna get rid of that one. For this step, I have changed my sandpaper to a 220 grit because you don't wanna leave those scratches like we did before. Make sure this is in good shape. If you got any little torn edges, uh, wrinkles, anything like that, it will scratch right where that's at. Now here's a little sanding pointer. You know we were trying to mainly sand out this middle area. When you're sanding, you wanna make sure that if you are using anything that's rectangular or even square, don't hold it straight like this. Hold it at an angle. Otherwise, those straight lines tend to dig in. And even if it's square, hold it a little bit of an angle if it's round, it doesn't matter, but there's one more tip. Don't concentrate just right on one area back and forth. Move up and down a little bit so that you're kind of feathering out your sanding or you're gonna kind of dig yourself a valley in here. So more like this. And that'll give you a lot better results. So we'll go ahead and vacuum this. So I've swapped over to that. I've already sanded this a little bit. What I'm going to show you is that this looks pretty good on camera. So what you have to do for level five is you have to learn how to side light it strongly. The more I believe it's oblique, the lighting angle is, the more it will magnify every defect. Don't be too alarmed because doing that makes even the best job look rough. It's going to show every scratch, every defect, but you're learning to look for the bigger defects that you need to fix. These tiny scratches, paint roller, will cover that up with a stipple. This light up here is decent, but what you really want is a nice strong light. It can be a flashlight, whatever you've got, but pretty directional so that you shine right down the surface. Okay, I'm going to walk you over here and show you some defects. I've got a few circled right here. You might be able to see them already, but watch when I put the light up here and put it strongly like that. It just makes them jump out a little more. So these are the kind of things that level five would absolutely show. The sanding scratches right here, they're not so bad. A paint roller would cover that up. That deeper one, maybe not. I'm gonna sand that a little bit more, but overall, when we look at this, it looks in really good shape. Okay, so learning to look for the defects, that's part of level five because if you don't use that bright side lighting, you'll miss a lot of those. But once it's painted, it gets a little bit shinier. The, the shinier you do, like if you do anything beyond flat, satin, eggshell, semi-gloss, it's going to show even more. And it depends on your lighting. Like if you put a wall sconce up here, suddenly you've got that harsh lighting going down the wall. If this is a ceiling and you mount a ceiling light close and it's shining down, you've got the same thing. That's why we get that bright light out and look for those defects so that if a light does that naturally in the future, we already fixed it. Okay, there's, there's a lot of dust on here and we want to get that off. You see how it stays behind that dust will make it really hard for your paint to stick right, your texture if you're going to texture it, but we're doing level five. So you want to get that off. I recommend either like a dust broom, something really soft, or in this case, we're going to vacuum it off. All right, now we're back to full brightness and I'm going to concentrate on this end because this is where the only defects that I left are. Once you've got it all sanded and you think it's good is there's one basically final step here and then one on the next day or in a few hours you get your bright light out and you just walk around 
checking everywhere. And you can take a job light or something, just set it up and shine it down the wall, darken the rest of the room. It'll make things stand out really good. And then I like to go around and just circle them. Now you might ask, can we sand these out? Well, you probably could, but sometimes you can't. If it's too deep and you try and sand one of these out, you end up making a little divot right there and that'll show in a level five. You want this flat. So you gotta be careful about that. So go around and mark everything. If you mark it with a pencil, do it with two hairs and some air because it is that soft, I could scratch it with a pencil. So I like to go around and just mark everything that needs to be touched up and then I decide if I'm going to sand it out or touch it up. Okay, so here's one of the tricks of doing a level five. One of the problems is if you go around and touch all these up with some mud, then you actually need to sand it. No matter how well you wipe it off, it leaves a little ring around here that can show through. It'll kind of telegraph through partly because this has just been wiped off, this has been sanded. So they're slightly different textures and porosities. So here, the problem is the next day, if you come back, these are all gonna look invisible. It's gonna dry the same exact color as this and you're gonna have a hard time finding it. You can, but a little trick is take some blue chalk or you could use blue food coloring. I used to use a blue paint tint Whatever you got, blue's a good color. It covers well for this application. Okay, I'm gonna add some straight powder to it. It takes a little longer to mix it in here this way, but we need a little bit more blue. It's getting a tiny hint of it. The powder sometimes just takes longer to mix up. Okay, it's getting pretty close. It took a lot to mix it up. Like I said, I added even more powder and you probably can't see a whole lot of difference. So I'm gonna put some of the mud without the tent right next to it so you can see the difference. Okay, you see in the picture, the difference in the yellow mud versus this bluish mud. So you don't want it real blue or it could be hard to cover up. We're just trying to make it stand out so that the next day when we come to sand it, they're easy to spot. So now we just put some mud on to fix anything it doesn't matter how much you put on but wipe it tight so you stand your knife up pretty firm and you wipe it completely off but level and you don't really want to leave little goobers like that but i'll dry these real quick and show you how they look okay it's dry now and you see how it just kind of pops out if i'd done that with just regular mud without the tent in it, it'd be really hard to see. Now, if you're doing like a whole house, a whole room, you just walk around, look for these spots and touch them up. Now, granted, if you circled them with a pencil, you could probably just spot it by that. Sometimes as you're going through with that light, you just touch them up. So mark them with this bluish tint and you won't have a hard time. But here's the one final step and then your level five is ready take a sanding sponge and I would recommend you get a worn out one kind of slightly worn out and get the finest one you can and if it's not worn out break it in a little bit sand some concrete or something just take off that harsh edge all sandpaper tends to have a harsher edge when it's new and then just go through and about all you do is a quick like that we'll dust that off and now that is smooth as a baby's butt the ultimate final step is be sure to prime and paint it properly be sure to put a good solid coat of primer on it and two coats of paint roll it with like a 3 8 to half inch nap roller and you should have a gorgeous smooth finish now, hey, I'm going to start featuring some of your pictures. This week, we got a picture from one of the viewers who sent me this photo of his final texture. He watched our videos, did his drywall work, and he did a skip trial after watching my video. And this is how it came out. Congratulations. I'm going to put your name on the screen there. If you've got photos of your projects you've done, 
send them to me. I'd love to feature them, give you a shout out. And before you go, I'm going to put a video right there and one right there. And those videos might help you out too. And if you enjoy this content, be sure and click the bell icon after you subscribe down below. More importantly, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. You guys are why I do this. So take care. I'll see you next time.